Lauren Steiner is a fellow podcast host, content creator, and she's also an activist. And she showed up to a town hall with a North Carolina state legislature named Jeff Jackson, and he is currently running for the U.S. Senate. Now, the crowd, as well as her, they wanted to know what his stance on Medicare for All was. And as you're going to see from the footage here, he wouldn't really give a definitive answer. He was very wishy-washy and dodgy, and he kept using buzzwords like universal healthcare, but he wouldn't actually elaborate on the plan that he supports. So what is it? So as you're going to see, uh, the crowd wasn't having it, and more specifically, Lauren Steiner wasn't having it, and he was very uncomfortable trying to explain his non-position to her, but she would not relent, and she kept asking him and pressing him to further explain what he believes, and... Uh, he doesn't have a satisfactory answer. Take a look. This is awkward, and he should be embarrassed. This is Lauren Steiner from the Robust Opposition, and I'm here at Jeff Jackson's Town Hall in Buncombe County. I have been a longtime Medicare for All activist, and I am here to ask him if he elected would co-sponsor Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill. In the first six months of the pandemic, 5.4 million Americans lost their insurance because it was tied to health. Yes. It was tied to their jobs. In North Carolina, we have 260,000 lost their jobs and lost their insurance. Our public health is, is overwhelmed. How do you plan to change or restructure our health care system in this country? If there's one thing that COVID has taught us, it's that an employer-based health care system breaks down during a pandemic when lots of people lose their jobs. Here's what I think is going, let's just talk health care. Okay, here's what I think is going to happen. You see the administration rolling out things in pieces. They did, the first thing was COVID relief. The second thing appears to be infrastructure. I bet the third thing is going to be health care. And I think it's going to be a version of universal health care, something that would get us to be the, no longer be the only developed nation that doesn't have true universal health care. Medicare I for all, Jeff. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and what I think is going to happen is that that's not going to pass, in part because of Joe Manchin. I think this next election, where we have states like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina, will determine whether or not we get to universal health care by the end of Biden's first term, which is 2024. We should be focused on actually getting to universal health care by the end of this term. How? There's no reason that we can't do it. How? By electing three more Democrats, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. What policy? Who's next? Who's next? What policy if not yes, Medicare for all? said you would answer my question on camera. Ma'am, I did answer your question no, on you, camera. I you, already did. You I, said answered, you wanted I answered your question right, in the middle you, of my speech already, Yes, but you, uh, but you said you wanted a policy that would get us to universal health care in 2024. So my I question do. is, if not Medicare for all, what policy is that? Well, I think there are different proposals in this space, and I'm open to a couple of different proposals. Can you say? What I'm not open to is failing. We have to get to universal health care by 2024. I don't think we can get there by 2022 because I think Joe Manchin is going to block it. Right. But I think we have a legitimate chance of getting there by 2024. And that's what I'm committed to. So I, which policies do you support? I'm open to different ideas in this space. I think the Biden administration is probably going to propose some form of a Medicare public option. I'm open to that. Just to sign on to something as a co-sponsor, doesn't mean it has to get passed. It's taken this long, decades, since John Conyers sponsored his bill to get 50% of the House Democrats on as co-sponsors. Just recently, Frank Pallone signed on. That was a very important signal. It would be a signal if you co-sponsored this, whether it got passed or not, that you support it as a policy. What I'm hearing from people across the state is they expect me to get something done. That's going to be my focus. I'm going to put all of my energy on actually getting legislation passed. People are done with politicians who say, I'm going to do this, and then they don't. So what I'm telling people I'm going to do is what I think I can actually accomplish. Do you what think I want, what I want is the boldest possible version 
of something I think we have a realistic chance of getting. And I think we have a realistic chance of getting the universal health care by 2024. It is painfully obvious that he is so full of shit. If you can't just state concisely and clearly what your policy position is, nobody should trust you. Nobody should believe you. This is an easy question. If you support a public option, then just say that you support a public option. If you support Medicare for all, then say that you support Medicare for all or don't. But when you use words like universal health care, that is a code word for mm, I don't support Medicare for all. Previously, I think you can argue that universal health care meant that health care was free at the point of service, but that rhetoric has been co-opted by corporate Democrats who don't actually support Medicare for All. And also, Medicare for All and single-payer activists have been trying to argue that health care is a right, but politicians like Joe Biden appropriated the rhetoric but not the actual policy itself. And so now they're saying, I believe that health care is a right, but they don't support the policy that would actually literally make health care a right. So it's really frustrating. And this is why Lauren Steiner, what she's doing here is super important. And this is why I wanted to show you this because you have to go beyond the rhetoric. If a politician says that they support a particular thing that sounds good, you can't just take them at face value. You can't just take them at their word. You have to dive deeper and press them for further details. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to get what you think you're getting out of them. They're lying to you or they're trying to dupe you into believing that they support what you support, but they don't actually want to say it because when push comes to shove, if they uh, are held accountable later, if they're elected, then they have plausible deniability. They could say, well, look, I never firmly committed to Medicare for all. So what Lauren, Lauren Steiner is doing here is she's forcing him to take a position and she's not allowing him to weasel his way out of that position. Now, Lauren Steiner has been doing this forever. My first introduction to Lauren Steiner was back in 2017 when she showed up to a town hall with Democrat Brad Sherman and uh, she pressed him on why he doesn't support Medicare for all. And there was so much pressure as a result of her asking him that question that he actually did end up caving. So this is really important. Getting politicians to speak directly and clearly with you, that really is one of the most important forms of accountability. And sharing your conversation with these politicians also is super important because we live in an era where we have social media and politicians don't get to lie and obfuscate about their position. People are going to show up and ask them direct questions. And one thing I got to point out that I almost forgot is, so he says, uh, we have to get universal health care. We have to get to that by 2024. I don't think we can get there by 2022 because I think Joe Manchin is going to block it. I'm sorry, but I have no respect for Democrats who use Joe Manchin as an excuse to not support policies. It's not about Joe Manchin. What do you support? And furthermore, do you support a policy enough to fight for it? You shouldn't base your support on a particular policy on what's politically possible. You should support a policy if it's good policy, if it will be conducive to good governance and have a satisfactory outcome. So, um, look, I think that you have to follow what Lawrence Steiner did. Send this guy an email. Let him know that you want a clear answer. Do you or do you not support Medicare for all? It's a yes or no question. And when we say Medicare for all, we don't mean Medicare for all who want it or Medicare for some. We mean, do you support healthcare that is free at the point of service and universally applied to every single citizen in the United States and non-citizen? That's the question that we have to ask these politicians. And um, sometimes you don't get a clear answer, which is why you have to press them. So uh, good job to Lauren Steiner. Shout out to her. I I'm a fan of her work. And definitely check out her YouTube channel for more videos like this one, where she really holds politicians accountable. And you love to see it because this actually is impactful. It actually does work.